welcome to The Conspiracy Show. My name is Richard Serrett. The Shroud of Turin is a linen cloth bearing the image of a man who appears to have suffered physical trauma in a manner consistent with crucifixion. The origins of the shroud and its image are the subject of intense debate among scientists, theologians, historians, and researchers. Some contend that the shroud is the actual cloth placed on the body of Jesus Christ at the time of his burial, and that the face image is the holy face of Jesus. While others contend that the artifact was created in the Middle Ages, as indicated by carbon-14 dating, which placed the artifact sometime between 1260 and 1390. Tonight on The Conspiracy Show, we'll investigate the Shroud of Turin, actual burial cloth of Jesus Christ, or medieval hoax. We're about to meet some of the top shroud researchers in the world who will present the most up-to-date scientific evidence they say proves conclusively that not only is the shroud the authentic burial cloth of Jesus Christ, but that it contains actual evidence of a resurrection event. We'll also check in with a skeptic who is prepared to refute all of the pro-shroud arguments. Ultimately, it'll be up to you and me to sift through these arguments and arrive at some truth. A truth, I trust, you will be willing to follow wherever it may lead. Friends, it's time to redefine reality. Genetic enigma or a human alien That's how cynical I am now about the process. Mainstream media, they've thrown in the towel. Weather patterns, creative life, they're gonna make it go away. has been engineered by the Illuminati. I'm here at Redeemer University in Ancaster, Ontario, Canada, with Professor Dr. Gary Chang. Gary, welcome to The Conspiracy Show. Well, it's good to be here. If you could describe the dimensions of the shroud. The shroud is approximately 14 feet long and about three and a half feet wide. If you go with the original cubic that the Jewish used, this is exactly two cubics by four cubics. That's one of the forensic evidences that suggests that this cloth was cut in first century uh, Palestine. A 14 foot long, three foot wide shroud made of linen with a triple weave of herringbone. And this is exactly what would have been used at that time. And the Romans, at one point at the end of Christ's life in around 70 AD when they conquered Jerusalem, they were killing 500 people a day with crucifixion. They were masters of the art of execution and torture and death. With respect to the actual image we have here, it is definitely the result of a crucifixion. The shroud has a tremendous number of facts associated with forensics that have only become available to us now. The forensic evidence is overwhelming that this particular image is the result of someone who had been crucified. This man had been whipped several times. There's over a hundred lacerations in the skin. He had also been crucified, both through the feet and, interestingly, through the, through the wrists. The blood stain coming out of the hand, it actually is coming out of the wrists, not out of the palms. In medieval Europe, they didn't know that. Every single image in medieval Europe, and right up till very recently, of Jesus crucified, shows a spike through the palm but we know, or have known for just over a hundred years or so, that actually the hands wouldn't have been strong enough to support the weight of the body. It would have had to have been the wrists. How did an artist know of a painting showing anything other than through the palm? How did he know to put it through the wrist? That would be highly original, but it's the truth. And that is in keeping with Roman crucifixion as we know now, but it's not in keeping with what people thought happened in medieval Europe. Now, as I understand it, victims of a Roman crucifixion would have had their legs broken in order to hasten their death. But the image on the shroud appears not to have had his legs broken. The fact that the legs do not appear to have been broken is consistent with reports that have been passed down 
If anyone knows their scriptures, one of the prophecies about the Messiah is that he would not have any of his bones broken. <laughs> this particular individual is also unique in the manner of how he was tortured and crucified in that he had also had what appears to have been a cap of thorns placed upon his head. You would see these, what was referred to as rivulets. These are blood stains. And also there's evidence that he was pierced in the, in the side. Yeah, this wound is actually found in the exact place where it's described for Christ in scripture. And the uh, actual shape of this wound is in keeping with a Roman spear. Then there's the multiple wounds all over his body from the flagellum and that horrible whip. What you see, and if you look closely, you can see a dot here and a dot here. It's like a dumbbell. You can see it here as well. Two marks here, two marks here, two marks here. You can actually map this out and it corresponds exactly with the Roman whip that was used to actually scourge people at time of Christ. There's nobody else in history who's ever been described as being crucified like this. How can it not be? <laughs> so the evidence that the C-14 was conducted on a patch that's not uh, representative of the rest of the shroud, that evidence is absolutely overwhelming. Justin Trottier is the executive director for the Center for Inquiry. Justin, welcome to The Conspiracy Show. It's great to be back on, thank you. The Shroud of Turin. Now you're an avowed atheist, but do you believe it's possible that there was an historical figure known as Jesus Christ? Sure, I will grant that there may have been some kind of leader or some kind of rabbi of some influence named Jesus. And I don't think you have to be an atheist to be a skeptic of this, actually. We've seen throughout history from the first providence of the Shroud in the 14th century, the bishop in the jurisdiction where the Shroud first came to prominence in, in France, even this individual was skeptical and he wrote to the Pope and, and asked the Pope to come and, and condemn the use of the Shroud to, as he put it, uh, defraud the populace of, of, of money. Most recently, Pope John Paul II in 1998 stated that it's not a matter of faith, referring to the Shroud, the Church has no specific competence to pronounce on these questions and entrust to scientists the task of continuing to investigate so that satisfactory answers may be found. So even somebody like the Pope is saying, this is a scientific question, let's see what scientists have to say, and they have found that there just isn't any good evidence for anything other than a forgery. The actual image on the shroud, is it paint? This is an interesting one, and I have to admit that the Shroud of Turin is not a simple matter for an avowed skeptic, but I think some of the best research was done by microchemist Walter McCrone, and this was called the uh, Shroud of Turin Research Project. When the STIRP team, the Shroud of Turin Research Project team, went to Turin in 1978, many of them expected that they would go there and in a few minutes find the brush strokes or whatever that would show that an artist had done it, but without exception, all of those who went there said that they couldn't see how this image could have been made by an artist. The STIRP team in 1978 showed that the image that you see is not the result of paint, it's the result of a very fine burn on the very surface of the fibers. If, were any, if this were paint in any way, it would have seeped down into the fibers and would have at least gone through one fiber to the next, but it doesn't. Nowhere on here do you actually see these fibers coated with any sort of paint. And we can't account for how that could be done, even using 21st century technology. There's no brush marks. You know, take a close look. There's no brush marks. There's no paint on it. But in fact, there was paint. There were billions, as he put it, of sub-micrometer pigment particles. Macron has claimed that this was a fake based on some pigments that he had found on it. These are the kinds of things that were routine in an artist's studio of 13th and 14th century. But one of the things they used to do, the owners would allow people to actually paint a replica of this. And while the paint was still fresh, they would push a replica against it. They touched the copy to uh, the original, sort of to enhance the holiness of the copy and bring it back and display it. And many of the king's castles in Europe had a copy 
again, the forger must have had incredible knowledge, uh, particularly in anatomy. I go back to the, the wounds that are depicted on the shroud that match the depictions of Jesus' suffering in the Bible. Well, I mean, of course, the forger would have had access, as everybody did, to the gospel narratives and would have been able to model his hoax on the, the portrayals of what happened to Jesus. But that still doesn't account for the image, the image which has some unique properties, which no photograph has, which no painting has. The wounds is an interesting one because I've seen it kind of used in, in both ways. So I've had, I, I've seen some people say, the shroud is so closely resembling what a crucified Jesus would have looked like that it must be the real thing. It couldn't have possibly been a hoax because how could it be so accurate? But I've also seen people say, well, it's inconsistent in a few ways. Why would that be? Obviously a hoaxer would have looked at the gospel narratives and would have made his hoax precisely what the gospel suggested. So these inaccuracies, in the, in the cloth, in the shroud, are actually evidence of authenticity. Well, you can't have it both ways. Let's uh, talk about some of the science and the, the carbon-14 uh, dating test that was performed in 1988, uh, which claimed that the, the shroud uh, or the linen uh, dated somewhere in the 13th uh, century, right. the mid-13th century. Now, proponents uh, of the shroud, those who believe it is, in fact, the burial cloth, uh, say that the sample fiber taken for the test was a piece of new repair fabric, uh, or secondly, some sort of an organic contaminant uh, may have skewed the carbon-14 dating. How do you right. respond to that? Well, I think what's important to realize at the outset is it, we're not just talking about one single study. It was actually three independent labs in different parts of the world that actually all showed a consistent within the margin of error, which is routine with radiocarbon dating, of 1260 to 1390, I believe, with something like 95% accuracy. The carbon dating right from the very beginning had problems. In trying to account for any measurement in science, one has to look at the measurement process and also at what is being measured. The carbon-14 dating was actually done in a patch that was cut out right about here. And if you notice, there's lots of repair work that has been done in this corner. This area here, under X-ray photography and other types of photography, shows up completely different than the rest of the shroud. The shroud had at some time been subject to a reweave. It had been repaired because of damage by being handled a lot and also by having pieces removed uh, illegally, if you like, by relic hunters. And it's actually misaligned, slightly askew, and people took uh, that particular piece and showed it to textile experts and every one of them said that not knowing that it's the shroud said oh yeah this has been reweaved so the evidence that the C14 was conducted on a patch that's not uh, representative of the rest of the shroud that evidence is absolutely overwhelming the shroud seems to to confirm features that were also said to have happened during his lifetime the lifetime of Jesus of Nazareth Justin, what about the dust samples that were taken from the shroud using a sticky tape uh, that seemed to indicate there were pollen samples on the shroud coming from plants not found in France or Italy, but in Palestine? Yes, and not only one species of pollen, but 33. 33 different species of pollen were discovered on the shroud that, as you say, came only from Palestine. Professor Avinom Danin of the Hebrew University of Jerusalem has done studies from a botanical point of view on samples and images taken from the shroud. And he has found that the Shroud of Turin must have been exposed to the elements in or around Jerusalem between the years 6 and 66 AD. What I think is suspicious, though, is that there was absolutely no pollen that was found in Europe, <laughs> of European provenance, and yet the shroud had a long history, something like half of its history almost, in Europe. And one would have expected that it would have accumulated some pollen from those environs during, during that, uh, during its period in, in France and Italy and elsewhere. Can you elaborate what the Italian photographer Seconda Pia discovered when he took a photograph of the shroud in the late 19th century? Secunda Pia was given permission to photograph the shroud in 1898. And if you're familiar with that type of photography, the old photography where you had a camera and inside the camera you had that negative, but what actually developed in his negative was not what he expected. Secunda Pia nearly 
dropped his photographic plate in in shock when he saw the photographic negative of the of the shroud he expected to see something that just looked like an ordinary negative but what he was looking at was actually a positive the entire face shown the entire body shown the hand shown it's actually quite incredible so just to clarify when Sakonda Pia looked at the film he should have seen a negative image but he saw a positive image which would indicate that the image on the shroud is a negative image. What is the significance of that? It would signify to him that if this covered the body of Christ, or if it covered anybody, then something emitted from that body a burst of energy. Now he would be, the analogy he would be using is his understanding of photography. He knew, he knew that when photons hit his negative, the silver grains would precipitate. And he knew something hit this cloth and caused the cloth to go dark. Assuming the image on the shroud is authentic, not painted on the linen, and it dates to the first century AD, and it is the body of a man who was the victim of a Roman crucifixion, why does that necessarily lead to the conclusion that the image got there due to some sort of resurrection event? I would suggest that the evidence is consistent that the image could have formed as a short, intense burst of radiant energy from the body of the man. Some notable research has been done. And the thing is that the photographic negative property implies that there's some kind of light involved. What you do see on the shroud are essentially burn marks. And that imprinted a image of the body on the shroud. The fact that there's distance coding is interesting because that's what makes it different from an ordinary photograph. And the reason is that to have distance coding implies that the source of that light was the body of the man itself, not a reflection from it. The shroud seems to, to confirm features that were also said to have happened during his lifetime, the lifetime of Jesus of Nazareth. And as I say, this was not apparent to people who were looking at this faint image in, in medieval times, but becomes apparent to us now using 20th and, and 21st century technology. But when you look at the evidence, it's pretty convincing. I think in a court of law, it would probably convince most juries that it is probably a genuine shroud. Would you like to see another radiocarbon-14 test performed on the shroud? Oh, most certainly. And in fact, I think you'll find that most shroud, shroud researchers have, would want that to happen and that, you know, many of us have been lobbying the church to allow further testing to, to be done. When I came at this, I, I, I thought that it was an interesting but run-of-the-mill Christian relic like many of the others, but there actually is a lot of depth to it. Forensic pathologists who have studied the bloodstains, without exception, have come to the conclusion that this is consistent with having once wrapped the, a body of a man who had been killed by being tortured, first whipped and crucified, had a, a cap of thorns placed upon his head, and the, the shroud for, you could hold up in a court of law beyond reasonable doubt that the shroud once wrapped such a recently deceased body. And I understand people that say, you know, it's been held as a relic by the Catholic Church and I'm not interested. I understand that. But when you look at the evidence, it's pretty convincing. I think in a court of law, it would probably convince most juries that it is probably the genuine shroud. If uh, this were actually uh, Jesus Christ crucified and we have a picture, then that means everything about this picture should fit into what we know about forensics today, and everything does. And regardless of what paint you can find on it, you know this isn't a painting. Even if it wasn't a painting, even if there wasn't evidence of, of paint and pigment, there are other potential ways in which this image could have been created on the cloth. Um, for example, through photography. There actually was a, a rudimentary way of putting a photographic image on a cloth using the kinds of materials available. And until scientists are given more access and those who have biases are left out of the research um, of, uh, on this, this particular relic, I don't think we're going to have a final answer to this controversy. I've considered the evidence from both sides carefully. And I must say 
that at this moment, I am leaning towards believing that the Shroud of Turin is the actual burial cloth of Jesus Christ. With all due respect to our skeptic, I believe the scientific evidence demonstrates that the image was not painted onto the fabric. For a medieval forger to have pulled off this hoax, they would have had to have had a 20th century knowledge of not only botany and physiology, but also anatomy and chemistry. In the matter of the Shroud of Turin, this schism that exists between science and religion will likely remain intact for generations. But for those who believe that the Shroud of Turin is the actual burial cloth of their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, it matters not. And now, I'd like to know what you think. You can contact us here at The Conspiracy Show through our website, www.theconspiracyshow.com. In the meantime, don't be afraid.